this is Juliette Lum here and I'm really happy to welcome you to Macquarie University on behalf of the HDR Learning Skills team. So for the next 10 to 15 minutes I'm going to introduce some of the resources and support that HDR Learning Skills offers to you as an HDR and MRes candidate. So you might be wondering what exactly are HDR Learning Skills? Well you can think of it in three different ways. Um, we support research skills, so that's the HDR learning skills part, um, particularly focusing on research literacy, but also other research skills and um, also to foster sustainable research practices. And I'm going to talk about each one of these and give some examples of what we offer. So just focusing, first of all, on research literacy. Now, uh, in order to be admitted into the MRes and HDR program, you've already had a lot of experience in academic writing, I'm sure. So what is research writing? Well, you can think of it as a profession, writing as a professional researcher, which is what you're going to be expected to do um, when you're publishing your, your findings. So we have various sorts of support and one of the main ways that we encourage you to um, develop your research literacy skills is through uh, research writing courses. These are not just one-off uh, magic bullets, but they are sustained writing courses that go usually across six weeks um, with lots of writing tasks to get feedback on your writing. It's the same group of about 20 other candidates um, and you um, meet for about two hours a week. Now you choose um, the writing course that suits your discipline. So uh, if you're working in the hard or natural sciences, then you would take the science course. If you're working in the social sciences, um, you'd take that course in, in the humanities. And these don't necessarily um, depend on your faculty. So if you're doing more social science um, research and you're actually in the faculty of science and engineering, you're most welcome to take the social science um, research writing course. Another really great way to develop your research literacy skills is through joining a research writing group. Now, these are groups that generally um, start with a learning advisor facilitating, but um, eventually they're, they're peer run. So you'd be meeting up with about you know, three to five other HDR candidates or MRes candidates um, to basically get feedback on your writing and to learn how to give feedback on others' writing. This not only is a really good skill to have as an academic, but also it um, teaches you about how to handle feedback uh, graciously and um, with welcome arms. Uh, it's really anybody can receive praise, but to be able to receive constructive criticism and to make good use of it is a skill that you just need to develop. Um, again, these are discipline specific, so um, you'd be with other people working uh, in the same type of discipline as you. It might not be your exact, uh, the exact department, um, but there'll be someone who's uh, working in the same uh, general area. We also have some standalone events, so if you can't commit to a six-week course or a research writing group, which um, the research writing groups do tend to go across, say, half a year or longer. We've had some writing groups that go, you know, they've been around for years. Um, but if you can only commit to a one-off thing, then we do have some workshops um, on various topics such as um, publishing, grant writing, responding to feedback, um, and various um, sections in a research thesis. So we have workshops on introductions and uh, workshops on conclusions or discussions. So you can sign up to just one of them if that um, suits your um, work pattern better. We also offer writing retreats twice a year, once in the winter and once in the summer. And these have been run on campus. And here's a photo of, from a previous year. Um, but since this year, we're also running them online. So no matter where you are, if you're overseas or um, interstate, you can still participate in a uh, three-day writing retreat with us. We also offer oral presentation training. So this might be for a conference that you're presenting your research at, um, a competition like the three-minute thesis. Um, it could be presenting even in front of um, 
like a departmental seminar or teaching, which is also presenting orally. So we um, have training for that and also mock presentation sessions where you can get feedback from your peers and a learning advisor. If you're unable to come onto campus, um, and a lot of us are getting used to that now, uh, we have plenty of online resources at Macquarie that are available to you. This particular resource is available to all students at Macquarie, um, not just HDR students. So if, you're, if you've done your undergraduate degree at Macquarie, you'd be quite familiar with StudyWise. It's an iLearn unit, so iLearn is our um, learning management system, Moodle. Um, we call it iLearn at Macquarie. And this one um, has a lot of resources that are not just for undergraduates, but also for postgraduates um, and high degree researchers. So if you have a look under um, writing in your discipline, there'll be stuff there on how to write like an archaeologist or how to write like a physicist. Um, and then there's some exemplars of um, things like research proposals and um, literature reviews and things that you might like to see are really good examples that have been annotated. So to find that, you can um, go to this website here, which is the Student uh, Skill Development uh, website, and you'll be able to click through to the StudyWise iLearn unit. There's also this uh, Academic Literacy for Research Students iLearn unit, um, and as you can see, there's a whole lot of topics there which um, are relevant to you as a PhD or MRes student. Um, I really encourage you to, uh, to self-enroll into this iLearn unit. Here is the URL for that. Um, and you'll be able to just work through this. It's uh, not a um, timed thing, so you can just work through it like a textbook. There's um, uh, a lot of instruction as well as tasks in there with the answers as well. So. If you want to know a good place to start, then um, module one would be a really good one. So this, uh, this uh, iLearn unit was actually developed for social science um, researchers in um, linguistics, but it's uh, very useful for uh, HDR candidates across campus in different disciplines. Okay, moving on to our second box under HDR learning skills. We also organise research methods and um, skill, other skills development. So we, a lot of these are run through the faculty, um, particularly if they are methodologies that are just used in one discipline. So uh, uh, have a look in your um, emails for stuff that your faculty and department is advertising. Um, the library also does offer um, workshops on Mendeley and EndNote um, so these bibliographic um, management tools um, and uh, they also have some other really good uh, resources for you but I'll let the library talk to you about that. Um, HDR Learning Skills also offers a statistical consulting service and they are, um, it's a drop-in uh, service but at the moment with COVID um, we've been shifting everything online so this may continue after 2020 so if you're listening to this in the years in the future uh, there's also the option to meet online with our um, statistician um, or you can get email advice so email peter petosh um, and you can uh, email your question to him or you can book an appointment to have a consultation online probably through zoom and then there's also some research tools training uh, workshops. Now these are very popular, so um, don't leave it to the week before to register into these because you probably won't get a space. So if any of these look like gobbledygook to you, um, you probably uh, uh, don't need to use them or you haven't gotten up to the point where you'll need to use these software. So for example, NVivo and SPSS, um, and also there's um, thesis formatting, which is really long document formatting in Word. Uh, again, I wouldn't leave this till you're about to submit your thesis. It's good to do these sort of workshops in your first year, even the thesis formatting one, um, even if you haven't started typing up a single word of your thesis yet, which I would not um, recommend you postpone. But uh, getting into, um, so setting up your styles and setting, setting up the way that you use Word um, is good to do in the early stages. Um, it'll save you a lot of time later. 
we, if you are unable to attend one of those workshops, and we're running them online as well, um, that we've got a whole lot of online guides, um, so static guides, as well as um, some online uh, tutorials, so some tutorial videos which train you on how to use these um, software. But there's also the face-to-face -face courses that uh, where you, if you want to ask the, the instructor questions face-to-face, um, -face, either through a computer or face-to-face -face in person. Okay, now the third part of the um, uh, HDR learning skills was the research practices box. And this one is fairly uh, new to our team. So um, we really want to look after you as a whole person, not just uh, a thesis writer. So we want to encourage all of our HDR and MRES candidates to start um, developing healthy research work-life balance. So you're not just a brain, you are a body as well. And so we have, as you can see here listed, a whole lot of different resources and ways that you can develop some um, uh, good skills is, that will be sustainable and to keep you healthy in uh, mind and body um, as a HDR candidate but also as a researcher in, um, in the future. So you'll see that there's courses, there's practice sessions, uh, one-off sessions as well as um, a podcast that one of our learning advisors, Dr. Florence Chu, has started up called Failing Aloud and uh, a blog that another one of our learning advisors, Dr. Michelle Jamison, has, uh, is keeping, and that's the Mindful Researcher blog. And I encourage you to Google those and to, to follow along. Okay, now some of you might be asked to teach. Now, HDR Learning Skills doesn't um, offer the, or doesn't deliver this training, but I thought I would just mention it here in case it's not mentioned elsewhere in the CCP. There is a tutoring induction program for those of you who are new to teaching or who haven't been teaching for a while and want to um, brush up on your skills and find out what the latest um, pedagogies are. So um, as you can see, there's a few examples there of the topics that are covered. Uh, it's a really good one if you haven't used Moodle before um, about how to use iLearn. Um, and these are delivered in face-to-face -face and online, so blended delivery. Um, at the moment, I'm assuming that they're running them all online. Um, but what you need to do is contact your faculty learning and teaching team. And there's the link to find out who yours are, uh, who, who your team is, and how you can contact them about dates and um, times and topics. So these are free for Macquarie staff members. So if you've been asked to teach, um, then a contract will be drawn up and you'll become Macquarie staff and you'll have access to all of this um, these workshops. Um, you can also find out other resources if you're um, being asked to teach and so you go to the staff page then you go to the teach tab and this page will show up and then you can go to this bit here so if you've asked, been asked to give a guest lecture or um, be a tutor it's good to get some training before you face your first class. Okay, so some other online resources that from my team. Um, there's three things that I just want to highlight to you. So there's the iLearn unit, and I've mentioned iLearn a couple of times already. This is our learning management system. There's the My RDC webpage, and this is where you can find out all the courses and workshops that are on offer and to register. They do tend to get filled up quite quickly, as I mentioned before. So. Um, have a look early and it's the first uh, to register uh, will be the first served. And then there's also the HDR Learning Skills website which covers everything that I've said today in this, which, uh, in this um, presentation. So just looking at each of those, how do you find them? Um, this is our website, so I'm going in reverse order. Um, as you can see, there's stuff about the workshops, our online resources, how to join a research writing group, um, various one-to-one -one consultations. So if you want to see a learning advisor or the statistician or a librarian, um, click there. Other research, research skills support and all our contact details. How do you find this? Well, I would suggest that you Google HDR Learning Skills MQ um, or you can have a look up there. I've put the um, URL at the very top there. But Googling and putting MQ at the end is often the fastest way to find us. 
Okay, this is the MyRDC. You'll be hearing a lot about this, um, I'm assuming, in the rest of this CCP. But basically, this is your one-stop shop to find out what workshops are being run. Um, and you can get to it by typing this into your search engine uh, or your browser. Um, so myrdc.mq.edu.au. If you want to jump straight to this view, the list view with just the HDR stuff, then there's a little tiny URL here, um, tinyurl.com slash MQHDR workshops. And that'll get you straight to this page, um, like I've shown you here, um, where you don't have to do all the filtering and it's much easier to see. So that's just a little tip. Okay, and this is the HDR Learning Skills iLearn unit. It's just a screenshot here. Um, and you'll see that, um, you know, you can access uh, the workshop uh, resources and videos that have been uh, delivered in the past. So it goes back quite a few years now, so there's quite a few workshops there. Um, and also um, details about other things. But something that's really worth um, pointing out to you is the announcements. So here, um, you'll see there's a announcements and if um, you sign up to this HDR Learning Skills iLearn unit then you will get these announcements as an email um, and so that's why it's really worth joining this iLearn unit um, to find out about these workshops before they get you know, filled up by everybody else um, and to, to enroll in that there's the URL so you can just um, enroll yourself just go to that and once you've clicked enter um, then you'll be enrolled in there. Okay, so finally, um, just to introduce the HDR Learning Advisors to you. Now these um, Learning Advisors are, um, generally they're located in a place that you'll be able to find them quite easily. So Michelle Jamison, so starting from the bottom with Humanities, Michelle Jamison is actually in the Arts Building, um, so you'll be able to email her, you can make an appointment to see her, um, and if there's not when you're in a crisis or even like when you're, um, you've been told you have to go and see a learning advisor, just even just to have a chat and maybe she'll, uh, you might want to have a chat about um, what courses she would recommend you take at which, which year of your PhD, for example. Um, the science of learning advisors, Dr. Adele Thomas and Dr. Megan Brewer, um, they are uh, located in the science building, so I think it's a 14 SCO. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, their job sharing, Adele's there the first half of the week and Megan will be there the second half of the week. And for social scientists, um, Dr. Frank Song is located in um, 4 Eastern Road, um, so that's the MQBS building. And Dr. Florence Chu is actually located centrally and Dr. Florence Chu does support social science, which is sprinkled across all the faculties. Um, so again, um, you can come and see her or um, just email her and um, have a, an online appointment with Dr. Florence Chu. So as you can see, all of the HDR Learning Advisors have PhDs, um, so they've been through it and uh, they'll be able to give you some really good advice um, where you're at as well. So I think that's about it. If you have any questions or suggestions um, about any HDR Learning Skills support, please feel free to email us here and uh, we'll get back to you very quickly. Um, and I wish you all the best with your MRes and your HDR degree. Thanks, bye.